hey friends, I am here in our classroom and I am in the midst of getting ready for this upcoming school year. We plan to start later in the month, hopefully August 22nd is our start date, um, and I am just getting all of the things ready. So I realized um, I had never shown what was in our morning basket. And so I wanted to start like preparing our basket for this upcoming year. And that meant pulling out some um, old resources. So anyways, I wanted to share with you what we had in our morning basket last year. And um, once I get our basket put together for this upcoming year, I will share with you everything that is in it. And I'm sure it's actually going to change throughout the year as we go through our resources. And if you're interested, I will show you those updated um videos of everything that's in it but for now let me share with you what was in our morning basket last year okay so i'm sitting here at the table i've got all kinds of things on this table because i'm telling you i am in full-on homeschool mode and it needs to all get put away and sorted and all the things so um i'm going to share with you what is in our basket so this basket actually came from the dollar tree it's just a round plastic tote I honestly, I don't know if I'd really recommend it. It wasn't large or wide enough for all of our resources. Um, the bottom is obviously <laughs> more narrow than the top, and some of these bigger resources like our morning time binder and some of these books just didn't fit all that great. So I have some stuff in the bottom to kind of prop everything up. Um, but I don't know, the colors just kind of go with our classroom. Um, I cut morning basket out of vinyl and stuck it on here. I used my Cricut for that. Um, we'll probably just keep this basket for the upcoming year because it does serve its purpose even if it is a little bit smaller. Okay, so let's dive in. So I'm going to start at the back. This is our morning time binder. Um, I created the cover and all of the things inside of it. I'm not going to go through this whole binder because we actually, I actually have a video on my channel walking you through the entire thing. But I will show you briefly. We had a bit of a schedule um, and I printed out a bunch of songs that I wanted us to learn. Well, I knew them, <laughs> but for the kiddos to learn. My kids are... When we started last year, they were three and six, and these are a lot of um, little Sunday school songs that you would kind of learn if you went to Sunday school, and my kids do go to Sunday school, but our church is a little bit more contemporary, and I was finding that they weren't learning some of these songs, so um, we learned them in our homeschool, and even now, um, my little guy, who is three and four, can actually sing the songs, and it's it just, you know that, like what you're teaching is working when they are repeating it back to you and singing the songs like later just randomly um, we worked on some memory work as far as the Old and New Testament books in the Bible we are in Canada however I'm American so I wanted my kiddos to learn the Pledge of Allegiance and kind of um, the protocol around it and then we also have the Star Spangled Banner and O Canada, both national anthems. And then we worked on some Bible verse memory work. So some of these things we didn't fully get completed. So I will actually keep them inside of our binder for this upcoming year. And I'm going to add some more things. I haven't fully nailed down everything that's going to go in our binder, but that's kind of a look at what we worked through last year and the things that I think we could improve upon or refresh our memory will stay in just as sort of a loop and so that we can, you know, just keep it in our minds. <laughs> okay, so this, oh, this basket's going to fall. No, it's not. Okay, so this was the Bible that we worked through. Um, we started at the beginning and we worked through through it. Um, I highly recommend this Bible. It's the Jesus Calling Storybook Bible, and it is so lovely. It also comes with um, three uh, read-along CDs, which was awesome. I actually got this at Ollie's, and oh, the price is not on it, but I think I only paid $12 for this Bible, and I think it was normally $25 or $26. So it comes in this like nice case. And these are the CDs in here. And then the pages are just awesome. 
And I love that it just breaks down the Bible stories into a more manageable and easy to understand way for kids. However, it tells the full story. Um, and I don't know, my daughter got so much out of it. I got so much out of it. Um, really, really, really enjoyed this Bible. In fact, she actually pulled it out the other day and just sat on the couch reading it. Um, can't recommend this Bible enough. So then another thing that we did was I picked up this little journal. I just got it from the Dollar Tree and this was our prayer request journal. So when we had um, prayer requests or we knew of somebody who was sick or just any sort of needs, we wrote these down and I allowed my daughter to write most of the things down um, to practice her handwriting. She's six. She hates doing she was six and seven. Um, she hates doing handwriting, and this provided her an opportunity to practice it without even really realizing she was practicing it. So it was awesome to just even kind of go back through this and see answered prayers and to see what we were praying for throughout our homeschool year. So this book is The Treasury of Virtues, and this actually was a book from my grandmother. Um, my sisters and I got it in 1996, and I love how she wrote good stories with a lesson. So these are a lot of fairy tales and just classic stories, like there's the shoemaker um, and the elves, and what one was this? This was the Emperor's New Clothes, and it just went through these stories, but it also spoke on a virtue. So at the end of each story... Um, it talked about a virtue and it was a really great way to introduce these concepts to my kids in a way that was on their level and um, to read a story and to learn what honesty really means um, and things like that. It was just, it was a really good book and they really enjoyed it. So we worked through this book. I am actually probably going to pass this along to my sisters because it was given to uh, all three of us and since we have worked our way through it I'll go ahead and pass it along to them. My grandma is actually no longer with us so this book is actually a real treasure um, in and of itself because it has her handwriting in it and it was a gift for us. Another resource we had was this nursery rhyme book and I picked this up at our bookstore. So in Canada, it's called Chapters, and this was an inexpensive book. I think it was $10, um, but it has all sorts of nursery rhymes, and the illustrations are awesome. Um, I love a book that has really good illustrations, and this book totally fits the bill, and it taught my kids the nursery rhymes, and the ones that had songs with them, I taught them the songs, and again, it was just really awesome to hear them singing those songs back and to learn a different part of literature that's different than a picture book and different than a poem. Well, I guess they're poems. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of them are poems, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just a different thing, and they're classics, and I realized that with my homeschooling, if I wasn't teaching my kids nursery rhymes, they probably weren't going to really be learning them. Um, and I don't know. They really enjoyed it, and it was a lot of fun. So we didn't fully work through the whole book. And I will admit, this is a really long book. There's some of these that I didn't know. Um, but we'll probably go through the rest of this book this upcoming year and work more on the nursery rhymes. Because my kids, you know, they're four and they're seven at this point. So this is totally right in their, in their age range. So some of the other things that we did in our morning time were we read books, of course. Um, I don't have any of the little books that, um, that we read through, but we read through a lot of fairy tales, um, like Hansel and Gretel, Little Red Riding Hood, those type of books. Um, again, just to have something different um, than just a traditional picture book or some kind of learning text. Um, I have learned in doing morning time and as the more the more that I research about morning time, just how important fairy tales and things like that are um, for teaching and understanding and just expanding kiddos' minds. 
Um, so anyways, we went through a lot of those. We also listened to music. Um, I had a CD player and some, um, actually there were, they were kids CDs that I can't even remember where I got them. Um, I have a bunch of them and we would listen to songs and they would dance and I don't know, it was just a lot of fun. So, um, we will incorporate some of that back into our morning time for this upcoming year. I have some fresh new plans and resources that we are going to include and some things I'm just not sure what we'll do yet, um, but it's exciting. And if you aren't familiar with morning time or a morning basket, I'm going to leave some resources in the description box for you. Basically, it's a time to gather together with your family or with just your kiddos, like your husband, whatever, to gather together and to start your morning in a beautiful way. Um, it can involve like Bible reading, it can involve um, composer study, it can involve picture study, and um, just a myriad of things, hymn singing and um, recitation and narration and all kinds of things. It can be a time where you do some of those subjects that maybe are on a loop, things that you don't necessarily do every day, maybe foreign language or um, sign language, uh, geography and history. I know sometimes a lot of people do with their morning basket. Um, it's just a time of family togetherness where you can start your day in a beautiful and gentle way and ease into your homeschooling rather than just starting the day right off with math or um, you know, whiz banging right into your day. It's just a way to bring culture and beauty uh, into your family and your homeschool. And I guess it's not even it's not even tied directly. It doesn't have to be tied directly to homeschooling. If you are just um, a stay-at-home mom and your kids are too little for school, or if you are um, a mom and your kids go to public school, you could still do this in the morning over breakfast or um, reserve it for the weekends as a special um, time for your family to get together. So again, like I think. The sky is the limit on how you build your morning time. Um, I know some people uh, do like a nature walk and um, things like that. So there's so many different ideas. I'm going to leave some resources down in the description box, um, podcasts and articles and different things to get your mind going. Um, there's one woman I follow. Her name is Pam Barnhill. And she's the one who sort of has taken... Uh, the concept of morning time and really run with it. She sells plans um, that you can purchase that will walk you through doing morning time. So you don't even have to think of the resources. You don't have to think of the ideas. It's just all laid out for you. And for some mamas, that is just golden. Um, so anyways, let me know if you do morning basket. Let me know what resources you're using, the things that you do during your morning time. It's it's as varied as each um, each homeschool family, so I would love to hear about what you're doing. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. I'd love to have you hang around here a little bit longer. We talk about homemaking, we talk about um, food, and we talk about faith, and we talk about family, and there's a bit of homeschooling thrown in there because I'm a homeschooling mom, and it's um, it's a huge part of what I what I do in my in my days and in my life. So anyways, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.